In today's video, we are going to go over comparing the currents and the voltage drops for two different kinds of combination circuits. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. When I look at my YouTube analysts, I see that so many people who watch have not subscribed to our channel. Please subscribe, click the notifications bell, give us a thumbs up, leave us a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. Now, let's get started. The first circuit we're going to look at is this kind of combination circuit. And in this circuit, we have two resistors, a 3 and a 5 ohm resistor that are in parallel with each other. And those two resistors are in series with this 8 and this 6 ohm resistor. Now, we're going to start off by looking at the currents at various points in this circuit. And before we do that, I just want to say we're going to try and do this as a kind of a qualitative analysis of based on what you should know about series and parallel circuits. We could go through and calculate all the voltages and all the currents, but we don't want to do that. We just want to try and compare the currents at various points in this circuit. Now, I would say for this circuit, there are three different currents. I would call that current I1. That's kind of the total current that comes out of the battery. We can think of the current as flowing in this clockwise direction. And then we have a second current, which we can call I2, through that 3 ohm resistor, and a third current, which we can call I3, which flows through that 5 ohm resistor. Now, everywhere along this pink path here, the current is going to be I1, and it's always going to be equal to I1. Anywhere along this path, this blue path here, the current is going to be I2. And anywhere along this green path through this branch, the current is going to be I3. Now, it's a good idea. You could actually take out a highlighter, a marker, colored pencil, and mark down those three different currents. And we want to say a couple things about those currents before we start answering our questions. The first thing we want to think about is that I1 is really the total current. It's the current that comes out of the battery, and you can think of the current as flowing in this clockwise direction like that. We know that I1 is going to be equal to I2 plus I3. At this point right here, I1 is going to split into I2 and I3. So we can say that if we add up I2 and I3, then we'll get the total current. All right, it splits into two different currents through those branches. We know that I1 is greater than I2, and it's also greater than I3. It's going to split, so these two parts, I2 and I3, are going to be less than I1, which is our total current. And based on the resistances through this branch and this branch, we can say that I2 is going to be greater than I3. I2 has a branch with a lower resistance. The lower the resistance, the greater the current. The current and the resistance are inversely proportional. All right, now we can start answering our questions. Now, you could try to read each question, answer it before I give you, maybe pause, answer it before I give you the actual answer, and see how you do. All right, so we want to compare the current at point A and the current at point B. Here is point A, and here is point B. You can see that both of those points are along this path where we have I1, where we have the total current, and therefore those two currents are, or the current at those two points are, that's right, equal to each other. Okay, what about the current at B compared to E? Well, here's the current at B. That's our total current. And here's the current at E. If we think of the current flowing in this clockwise direction, it's going to split here. Some goes this way and some goes that way. And just like we said, the current I1 is going to be greater than the current through those two branches. So the current at B is going to be greater than. Okay, the current at G compared to F. So here is G and here is F. Now this we have to use our idea that we have different resistances, and the lower the resistance, the greater the current. So G and F, G is here. G is in the branch with the higher resistance, and therefore it's going to have the lower current. So G, the current, is less than F. All right, at D, the current at H, or for letter D, the current at H compared to G. Now, this is an interesting question. Sometimes people get a little confused here. G and H, you can see they're both in this one branch. The current all the way along this branch is I3. 
Some people think that whether the current is measured before or after the resistor or after the light bulb, the current is going to be different. The current does not get destroyed or used up by light bulbs or resistors. The energy does, but the current remains the same. It's just the energy that's going to be decreasing or increasing. So all along this path, it doesn't matter whether we measure the current before or after the resistor, the current is going to be equal. All right, okay, that's ED. We have a couple more for this one. All right, this is going to be E, the current at B as compared to F. So let's see, we have B here and we have F here. Now we kind of went through this when we talked maybe about over here, but you can see B is the total current, F is in one of the branches after the split, so therefore the current in B is going to be greater than. Okay, a couple more. Um, let's see, A and L. So here we have A and L. This is similar uh, compared to G and H. Sometimes people think, okay, after the battery, before the battery, before the battery. Out. It doesn't matter. The current remains the same. The energy that the current carries is going to be different. All right? But in this case, the current at A as compared to L is going to be, that's right, equal. Okay, one more for this one, H and I. All right, this is a similar one. Now we have compared H here and I. The current splits. These each are going to be less, but then you can think of the current coming back together here. And that means at I, it's come back together. H is only part of the current. So that the current at H is going to be, that's right, less than. Okay? So those are the kinds of questions that you should be able to answer comparing the current. You can see we didn't really do any math. We didn't actually calculate the currents. We just used our knowledge of series and parallel circuits. Okay, now we're going to look at the voltages. Now, this is a little trickier, I would say, the voltages. And the first question is the voltage drop across BC and JK, or KJ right here. All right? You can see that we have these two resistors, and each of those resistors has the same current flowing through them. As we said in the previous slides, anywhere along here, the current is going to be the total current, which we called I1, and the current is going to be the same. Now, you should know if you have a higher resistor that the voltage drop is going to be greater across a resistor with a higher resistance if the currents are the same. And the current through 6 volt resistor, excuse me, the 6 ohm resistor and the current through the 8 ohm resistor are going to be equal to each other. Now, <clears throat> we could do a little math and actually calculate it, just for an example, just to see how it works out. We would use Ohm's law because we want to know the voltage difference, the voltage drop. Now, we don't know the current. We could calculate it. We don't know the current. We know the current is the same. So we could really choose any current. And I just chose 10 amps. The current is not 10 amps, but we know they have the same current. So it doesn't really matter which current we use. For BC, we take the current times the resistance we get 80 volts, just as an example. For JK, we use the same current because they have the same current, different resistances, so it would just be 60 volts. Now, once again, we know this is not 60 volts and this is not 80, but we know that this one is going to be greater because we know when we use Ohm's law, the same current, the higher the resistor, the higher the voltage drop. Okay, so you should remember if the currents are the same, if the resistance is greater, then it's going to have a greater voltage drop. Okay, that's A. That's kind of maybe, um, you know, one we use the most math for. No more math, really. Okay, the voltage drop across BK and DI. Now, here BK, what is the voltage drop across BK? Well, the voltage drop across BK in any of these points on either side of this battery is going to be 12 volts. Once the current goes through this resistor and this resistor, then the energy is going to be less. So the voltage drop, okay, the change in the energy is going to be less across D and I because some of the energy will be used by these resistors. So therefore, the voltage drop across BK is going to be greater than the voltage drop across DI. Okay, what about EF and GH? So here's EF and here's GH. EF and GH. Now, those two resistors are parallel with each other. And you should remember the rule for parallel resistors, parallel circuit elements, and the voltage drop across them. 
And that's right, you should remember that the voltage drop across parallel vo circuit elements is the same. So it doesn't matter that this is 3 ohms and this is 5 ohms. It doesn't matter that they have different resistances. If they're parallel, the voltage drop is always going to be the same. So in this case, it's equal. Now the currents are going to be different, but the voltage drops will always be the same. Okay, so now we can go on to D, and D is EF and DI. EF is here, and DI is here. Now you have to kind of recognize that anywhere along either side of these two resistors, the voltage drop is going to be the same. Whether I measure across CJ, EF, GH, or DI, the voltage drop is always going to be equal. The voltage drop across <clears throat> JK and DI, JK is here and DI is here. Now this is the total current. The current the total current flows through this resistor, and this is a 6 ohm resistor. The total current also flows through both of these resistors. And the equivalent resistance of parallel resistors is always going to be less than the lowest resistor. So if I was to calculate the total resistance, the equivalent resistance of these two resistors, it would be less than 3. So the current, we could say 10, times something that's less than 3 is going to be less than 10 times 6, which is 60. So therefore, the voltage drop across JK is going to be greater than. All right, we have, I think, one more. One more for this one, the voltage drop across LA and BK. Now, we said earlier that the voltage drop anywhere across this side of the battery, on either side of this battery, along these points here, whether it's BK, LA, at the corners here, is going to be equal. Okay? So that is for that um, combination circuit. Now we have this circuit, and we have this circuit. We have two resistors that are in series, and they're in parallel with this one. We can do the same thing when we talk about the current, because we're going to talk about the currents first. The current there is the total current. Anywhere along that path, we have the total current, which we call I1. It's going to split at C. Some of the current goes through the 13 and the 7 ohm resistor, which we can call I2. And the remaining current goes through the 5 ohm resistor, which we'll call I3. Once again, the total current is I1 which comes out of the battery, if we think of the current flowing in this clockwise direction, then we know that I1 is going to be equal to 2 plus 3, because it splits in these two pieces. And therefore, we know that I1 is greater than I2. It's also greater than I3. And we also know that I2, the current through I2, is less than I3, because this branch has a total resistance of 20 ohms. This branch only has a resistance of 5. All right? The higher the resistance, the lower the current. So the current through this branch is less than this one. Now, once again, we could go through and calculate all the currents and the voltages, but we want to use our knowledge of series and parallel circuits to try to do a qualitative analysis without going through all the math. So the first one for this one is the current at H and D. Here is H and here is D. H is the total current, D is after the split, so we know that H is going to be greater. Okay, B, D, and I, or excuse me, B and I, here's B, and here's I. Okay, these are both in the area where we have the same current, the total current, so we know that those two are going to be equal to each other. Letter C says F and E, here's F, and here's E. Now, I mean, we got to use the ID here, again, for the different resistances. F is here. It has a higher resistance than E, because E is only 5. And F here is in this branch where there's 20 ohms for the resistor. So this one is going to be higher resistance, less current. OK, letter D, we have E and D. So here is E and D. And once again, we have these two points. They're on opposite sides of the resistor, but they're in the same branch. It doesn't matter whether they come before or after. The current is always going to be equal. Now we have a couple more. I think we have two more for this one. And um, let's see. We have F and B. So here is where is F. A, B, C, D, E, F is here, and then we have B here. So F, again, is after this split. B is the total. This is the two pieces. 
each of the pieces is going to be less than the total. Okay, I think we have two more now. I and E. Here's I and here's E. So this is, you can think of it, the current's going this way. This is after the current has come back together. This is just a part. This is the whole. So I is going to be greater than. The last one for this current is H and D. Here's H and here's D. H again is after they come back together. D is after the split, apart. So we can say that this is going to be greater than like that. Okay, so that is the currents for that type of combination circuit. Now we're going to look at the voltages, and we are going to say that you should remember that the voltage drop on either side of this battery, anywhere along here as compared to along here, is going to be 12 volts because those points are all in parallel with that battery. Then we have two other voltages, okay, with a voltage drop across this resistor and the voltage drop across this resistor. The voltage drop across each of these is going to be different because they have different resistances. This one's going to have a higher voltage drop, higher resistance. When we add the voltage drop from here and here, then they're going to have to also equal 12 volts. So we, let's just go through this. We uh, Ohm's law of equals I times R. This is for the 12, it's 13 and 7. They have the same current, I through 13, I through 7. They're equal to each other. But because the resistances are different, we know the voltage drop across the 13 is going to be greater. The higher the resistance, the higher the voltage drop. The lower the resistance, the lower. So it's going to be greater across the 13. We want to keep those things in mind. So we have CG and DE. So let's see, here is CG and here is DE. Well, anywhere along these two paths, the voltage drop is going to be 12 volts. So those are going to be equal to each other. Okay, for B, we know we have now BH. So here is BH and here is DE. Once again, on either side of that battery, okay, when we go from here back to the battery or from here back to the battery, we don't go through any resistors and therefore those are equal again. Okay, now we have letter C, which is CF and FG. So here is CF and here is FG. So we want to compare the voltage drop across this resistor to this resistor. Well, we said over here the currents are the same. This has a greater resistance. This has a lower resistance. The higher the resistance, the higher the voltage drop, as long as the currents are the same. So CF is going to be greater. Okay, now FG and DE. Okay, FG is here. This is just going to be part of the 30 because this, excuse me, this 12 is going to be all the way across CG. But we want to know FG, which is just going to be part of that 12. DE is the whole 12. So this one is going to be less than. All right, I think we have the last one. Okay, so we want to know the voltage drop across FG. So FG, where is FG? Is right here. And HB, once again, you can see this is going to be 12. This is only going to be part of that 12. All right. So therefore, we know that FG is going to be less than. Okay. So there you go. We went through comparing the currents at different points and the voltage drop across those circuit elements for those two kinds of combination circuits. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please don't forget to do all of the following five things. Subscribe to my channel, Step-by-Step -step Science. Click the notifications bell, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.